long ball. Stretch, stretch, stretch. You can put it on the board. Yes. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Today's show is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind for less than a buck a day. Legal Shield can with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, contracts given to you that you don't understand, plus a whole lot more. Call Legal Shield right now at 213-245-1305. That's 213-245-1305. Again, 213-245-1305. Or visit them online at nocourt.us. That's nocourt.us. And tell them the Sports Circus sent you. Go! And a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Hey, guys, I don't know if you had a chance to watch a little bit of late-night baseball last night, but I got to tell you, it was exciting. And I mean it was exciting. <laughs> a little bit of chaos, a little bit of mayhem. Did you see it by chance? Oh, yeah, I was up late. I was watching the Ooh, Brewers game, actually. And then I got a text, like, did you see what just happened? (laughs) (laughs) Hold on a sec. Don't steal the thunder now. Now, This was great, folks. Look, if you're a fan of baseball and you're a fan of baseball's unwritten rules, this is absolutely for you. (laughs) Now, think about this. Now, imagine, you know, we're, we're at the trade deadline, right? And so the trade deadline, a lot of stuff happens. And some things you can predict and some you cannot predict. But what was kind of cool was there was a trade, a really good trade, I think, that was made for the Cleveland Indians. And, of course, you know, the Indians made a deal with the Cincinnati Reds, picking up Yasiel Puig, and, well, they got themselves another stick, right? So, you know, we, we, saw, we saw a really nice trade with those guys, but this is what I'm really after. Never mind all of the, the trade. I mean, obviously, all right, look, the, the Indians got Puig and Moss and Reyes, etc. They, they've got some good players. And the Cincinnati Reds were the recipients, the proud recipients, of Trevor Bauer, who just can't seem to can't seem to really keep a control on himself these <laughs> days. But wait a minute. There's a little bit more to this story. Now, <laughs> news of the trade broke during the eighth inning of last night's game against the Pirates, of course, being the Reds, right? And there was a there's a little bit of bad blood between these two teams. You know what I mean? Just just a little bit. And it's been going on, I don't know, for about a century. Something to that effect, right? Right. And so Yasiel Puig, of course, was traded during the 8th. But what did he do? He, he still took his outfield position in right field over in the ninth inning. Why it's unclear. What is unclear is Puig's dedication to his now former Reds teammates when tensions boil over at the end of the game as well. Now, think about this. You've got two teams that battle back and forth, and they don't like each other. And then they start chirping. And now it's getting ugly. Now there's gestures. Now there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's all kinds of mayhem going on. And guess what, folks? There's a visit to the mound. And in that visit to the mound, well... We had a very interesting meeting between David Bell and Amir Garrett. Now, guys, I don't know if you saw this, but what I saw was David Bell motioning to his dugout. And then right after, well, of course, Amir Garrett was covering his mouth with his glove, like most pitchers do when they're in a conference. But then what I saw was I saw David Bell, the manager, of course, of the Reds, Give Garrett a pat on the ass as a gesture of, go get him, Tiger, and it's okay to charge the Pittsburgh dugout. I love it. (laughs) And there it was. I love it. Then all hell broke loose. Then what did he do? Garrett came in, and he took on the entire Pittsburgh Pirates team. And what was great about it in the very beginning was that There were three guys facing him, and it was kind of like the drunken dude. You know when the drunken dude says, hey, man, just hit the one in the middle. Oh, yeah. Remember that with Rock? Mm -hmm. Remember that in Rocky Balboa? It was, I think it was uh, Rocky III, and it was (laughs) Apollo Creed and his trainer. They were 
no, yeah, it was Rocky Three. Yeah, he's said, like, there's three of them. <laughs> yeah, just, just hit the one in the middle. And I think that's what Amir Garrett did. And, man, it was all hell broke loose. But I love the fact that of all of this mayhem, whether punches connected or whatever, but I love the fact that David Bell gave Garrett the go-ahead and gave him the pat on the ass to go get him. I love that. A little bit of unwritten rules in baseball. Yeah, it was all, all hell broke loose. I mean, look. And it was even David Bell and Clint Hurdle in a little shoving match. But I guess my point is, look, folks, the unwritten rules of baseball are alive and well, and there's nothing wrong with the game policing itself. However, with these two teams, you know, they've really taken it to a level where maybe they should have kind of stopped while they were ahead, maybe earlier in the year. I think back in April they had another melee but these two teams absolutely despise one another. What are your thoughts on this, Mike? I mean, I love it. I love that the competitive fire is through the roof right now. It's just going to be awkward with Pui now being in Cleveland. That's, that's crazy. Why is it going to be awkward? Rock, did you see it? Uh, yep. Did Rock's you see here. the fight? Yeah, I saw it. You know what? The one thing I loved is watching Puig go in there like a cannonball, even though he had been traded 15 <laughs> minutes back beforehand. Oh, I love it, man. Exactly. Here's Puig. <laughs> Puig's right in the middle of the mayhem. And I guess, you know, he didn't care. He knew there was going to be, be suspensions handed out anyway. And let's face it. I mean, Trevor Bauer is going to be facing a suspension, <laughs> you know, from his long toss anyway. No, so, uh, hey, just one MLB suspension for no. another. And it'll be what? said that they were not suspending him. They're just fining him. Really? Yes. That's crazy, but I guess the real suspension is being thrown off a playoff contender. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, all <laughs> six of one, half dozen of the other at this point. Oh man, that was great! It was what an incredible fight that was. Yeah, I you know, and I give a big round of applause to those guys because they stayed in it, and this wasn't just, you know, two or three guys. It was the benches cleared, and all hell broke loose, and I love that. I love watching. Uh, fights in a new school MLB park just because when the bullpen's empty, they kind of like meet in the middle and yes. they kind of walk out to the fight and go, all right, am I going to take you? Am I going to take you? How are we going to do this? Right. How about with, and like in hockey, I love when the goalies square off. I mean, that's my favorite thing in hockey. Yeah. But I, I would like to see the starters square off against the starters, the bullpen guys square up against the pen, the catchers. I want to see position for position. I want to see these guys squaring off and throwing blows. I mean, I, that would be incredible. Yeah, there's not, there would be nothing better than a closer versus closer Donnie Brook, especially if you've got, you know, and it should be a little deeper than that. If the big buffet's on a team, you find your biggest guy. He's got to go up against the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the goon on your team is going after the goon on the other, just like in hockey. Exactly. You know, you're not, you don't want your star player going to the goon. You want goon right. versus goon, star versus star. Oh, guys, that was incredible. What a melee, and I love that. I wish baseball would have a little bit more of that, but that's me. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, and that's exactly what I look for in baseball games. We'll be back here in a few minutes on the Sports Circus. Lots more to come. Don't go anywhere. Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster, Stell, here with Bill Clement. We have special guests Robert F. Kennedy Jr., billionaire Jeff Hoffman, Mike Golick, Tom Flores, John Stockton, David Meltzer, Jim Tunney, Roger Craig, Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hayne, Kevin Green, Brian Erlacher, Jim Jeffco, Rod Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker, Brett Saberhagen, Rich Cho, Marky, Charles Smith, Danny McClain, Yank Barry, Grant Muir, Paul Dvorsky, President of the Vegas Golden Knights. It's George McPhee. Len Kamarowski, CEO of Cavaliers. Dwight Green. Mickey Suda. Art Steele. Don Beebe. Ken Sullivan. Tom Dreesen. Pat O'Connor. Alan Glist. 43 Tony Awards. Walt Harris. Mike Crawford, President and CEO of the Hall of Fame. Louis Viola, President. Paramount Famous Production. Universal Worldwide Home Entertainment. Universal Studios Home Entertainment. Glenn Berman. Randy Funk. The professor. 
Dr. Tommy John. Dave Robinson. Pat Williams. Brandon Schneider. Henry Bibby. Mike Bibby. Tim Donaghy. Dan Hughes. Marcus Johnson. George Lynn. Larry Center. Steve Berlander. Dr. Jen Welter. Steve Lanner. Gus Perron. Craig Colquitt. Paul Shortino. Des- My life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson. Jason Hook, guitar player for Five Finger Death Punch. Craig Bartok, lead guitar player, songwriter for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band Heart. Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports circuit. Vinny from the Bronx Wanderers. Mark Schulman, drummer for Pink Share, Velvet Revolver, TV Nicks, Cheryl Crow, Simple Mind, Richard Mark, Aaron Fink, Breaking Benjamin, Jason Hartlett, drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent, Matt Starr, drummer for East Fraley from Kiss, rock star Todd Kearns, Phil Buckman, the bass player in the rock band Fuel, Dave Laurie, Neil Donnell from the band Chicago, this is Brad Gillis from the band Night Ranger, and Philip Bailey, reasons, the reasons that we Eight time Grammy Award winner, top 100 greatest drummers of all time, Kenny Aronoff with John Fogarty, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Mountain John, Stevie Wonder, Dave Grove, Joe Walsh, John Mellencamp, John Deddy, drummer for Player, Anthrax, Testament, Volby, Mitch Malloy, and lead singer of Great White, Keith Thorne with Chris Cornell, Melissa Etheridge, Rob Mount, drums with Lou Graham, Philip Schaus, I play guitar with Except, I play bass guitar for Ace Fraley, Todd Morris, the offspring of Todd. Hi, Dennis. The Doors. Eric Aldenia, sir from Bill Adams. Red Jones, bass player for Vontae. Phil Hart. Fuel. Michael Shaker Group. Brian Trock. Scotty McClellan. Chris Christian. Four-time Grammy Award winner. Heidi Merrill. Vince Van Patten. Daniel Negreanu. Greg Fossilman Raymer. Billy Hayes. Foz Davis. Rashawn Phillips. Dr. Christian Willemeyer. NASA astronauts. Mike Malay. Anthony Davis. George Stark. Dwayne Starks. Brian Mitchell. Rick Upchurch. Willie Rofe. Jim Fossil. Chief Schrader. Pepper Chuck. Johnson. Zandre Bad Moon, a.k.a. Rise. Brian Jordan. Bill Romanowski. Dwight Hicks. Jason McKee. Michael Keller. Fred Mitchell. Tim Rando. Tom Brenneman. Barry Katz. Brad Williams. Dean Edwards. Emmett Short. Jason Acevedo. It's Christina Smith. Bruce Nahan. Lee Haney. Rick Barry. Cowboy Ninja. Lance Pekas. Anson Williams. Don Most here. Kevin Sorbo here. How- yes. Dr. Peter McCullough. Damian Jackson, ex-Navy SEAL. Mark Rick Carey. Tinkerbell. Stephanie Stuckey, CEO of Stuckey's Corporation. Bruce Perlow, one founder, Marijuana Inc., Medical Marijuana Inc., Hemp Inc. Ronnie Nunn. Bellagy Henderson. Jack Llewellyn. Sports psychologist. Susie Hellmaker. Alexander Bardo Pinto. Bill O'Brien. Brad Server, grandson of Curly Howard from the Three Stooges. Chris Kemper. Aaron Ron. Dark Kushner. Jose Rio in the house. Greg Olson. Matt Joyce. Jim Lambert. Brad Coleman. You know Burst. Santana Moss. Vance Johnson. Donnie oh, Shale. Larry Bubber. Cole. Eddie Burry, Wesley Woodyard, Dexter Irvin, Colin Fraser, Andrew Ladd, Dustin Penner, Brian Killingsworth, Bart Oates, Don Horn, Ryan McNeil, Devon Kirkland, Chucky Okobi, Jackie Sherrill, Eddie Meter, EJ Speed, Jesse Wooten, Dave Murhar, Pete Todd, Bob Grant, Dan Pastorini, Mark Fleming, Brad Hopkins, Lee Steinberg, Steve Watson, Dan Vincent, Mitzi Dolan, Karen Laurie, Bo Kemble, Glenn Elmore, Chucky Brown, Aubrey Hunt, Chuck Jones, John Nyland, Mandy Van Slyke, Matt Starr, Dr. George Gauthier, Barry Sherrill, Jesse Sapolo, Dana Stubblefield, Jeff Rago, Jeff Jagger, Gino Toretta, Jim O'Brien, Gary Justin, JT Thompson, Jim Everett, John McLaren, Brad Boone, Mel Stottlemyre, Alan Massengale, Francisco Dalton, Kurt Sandoval, Matt Gracie, Bailey Brom, Leonard Marshall, Gary Reasons, Doug Plank, Everson, Walls, Jim McNally, Shemmy Shem Beckler, Kurt Walk, Leroy Irvin, Dickie Wood, Tyrone Poole, Alicia Thompson, Chris Duhonker, Scott Petrak, Bruce Crampton, Bush Bear, Joe Coff, Kristen Rhodes, John Jusco, Mayor Carolyn Goodman, John Lee, Mayor of North Las Vegas, Amy Wilson, Nick McKay, voice of Salem Saberhagen, the talking cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the father of the first family of drag racing, John Ford, Ricky Stenhouse, Ben Brost, the voice of stock car racing, Robbie Wells, seeking the Democratic nomination for President of the United States, Jim Strasser, founder and CEO of Cali Strong, the California Sports Company, CEO of uh, LA Gear, Nike, Oakley, Quicksilver, owner partners at Converse. Shea Hillebrand. Carl McDowell. Jamie Baker. Carlos Munoz. Darius Casparitis. Dominic Roussel. Oh, Christy. Emery Moorhead.
Kyle Turley. Dave Robinson. Jeff Bryant. Leroy Irvin. Mike Kaminsky. Matt Doherty. Dan Clark. Nitro. American Gladiator. Joe Robinson. Daryl Evans. Big Theo Ratliff. Ricky Pierce. Hey, well. Mercury Morris. Eric Davis. Thomas Hollywood. Henderson. Caleb Sweethands. Plant. Bronco <laughs> Billy Ryan. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. The segment is brought to you by Kelly Vegas, helping people just like you create and host your very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Kelly Vegas can help you with everything you need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic every day, like you're doing right now, and host your very own talk show in your very own studio. Call Kelly Vegas at 949-445-1119. That's 949-445-1119. Again, 949-445-1119. Or visit them at kellyvegas.com. That's C-A-L-I Vegas dot com. And tell them the sports circuit sent you. And a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and our NBC Fox and CBS Sports affiliates from coast to coast, including our friends also on Facebook Live. Decide to run the video here. And let's see, we're expecting a special guest, but we're just kind of hanging out, waiting for him. Guys, I want to get back to baseball here. Now, back to that brawl that we saw last night between the Pirates and the Red Lakes. How far back does that really go? How many years does it go? A lot. A lot? A lot. Well, that's a great (laughs) answer. All right. right, We'll give you a round of applause for that. Not. Come on, man. But look, these two teams, I mean, let's face it, it's not just these two teams. I think it's more of these two cities. I mean, go back to the Steelers and the Bengals, right? Two That's teams a rivalry, that really, yeah. Right, the two teams, they don't really like each other. And frankly, as soon as Roethlisberger is done, well, guess what? They're both going to be in the toilet just as the Cincinnati Bengals are. Yeah, I don't know about Cleveland, but yeah, I agree. Well, Cleveland, look, Cleveland yeah. Cleveland's going to be a PR disaster. Vegas loves Cleveland. Cleveland is going to be a PR disaster. Wait and see what happens with those guys. <laughs> there are too many personalities. You know, they're reminding me of the Oakland Raiders. We talked about this the other day. Right. They're reminding me of the Raiders. But let's go back to baseball. Now, today was a really big day in the baseball world, and we know there's been a lot of movement today, right? Oh, Lots yeah. Lots of movement. Oh, yeah. And honestly, I, I would say that the Cubs actually did themselves a favor today. And I'm not a big Cubs guy. Everybody knows that. Well, I Just, thought you said they need a lefty. Well, they did pick up a lefty. They did get themselves a lefty, but they also got themselves some speed on the bases, too. Right. You know, you got to move runners over. you got to play that small ball game. I mean, look, the Castellanos trade, yeah, that was a good thing for the Cubs. They got themselves a big bat, but more importantly, they got themselves some speed, and that speed came from an unlikely source. Now, Tony Kemp just was acquired today by the Cubs, now, if you, guys, if you don't know anything about this kid, and I watched him play minor league baseball, and Tony Kemp is absolute lightning in a bottle. This kid is fast. I would argue that he is, if not the fastest guy in major league baseball, he's in the top three. Do you know anything about him? No. I, he looks like he was, what? He looks like he's 27 years old. I have no idea who this guy oh, is. Oh, okay, well... well but that's why I ask you if you actually know about no, him. I mean, no. you could read stats or whatever, whatever. But what I'm after is, do you know about Tony Kemp? I mean, he's kind of like the best kept secret in big league baseball. He really is lightning fast. And the Cubs are going to use him for a lot of situational play. I think that was a good move. They got themselves a, a left-handed pitcher. I don't think it was the guy that they wanted. But I think they were kind of stuck. You know what I mean? How about the Astros landing Granky? That's ridiculous. Yeah, they got to be the you know favorites now, shouldn't they be? Well, I don't necessarily know if they weren't before that. Right. But I have to believe that the Astros made they made actually two good pickups today, 
right? And and obviously Zach Greinke being probably the cornerstone of their move. And remember, I think they picked up Aaron Sanchez as well. That's right. And yeah. I mean, I know Verlander loves it. He clearly was showing his emotions on Twitter. <laughs> Like he was tweeting wow. this league. Watch the Twitter sphere, right? <laughs> but Aaron Sanchez is another tremendous pickup. I mean, come on. This is getting to the point now where the Houston Astros have an all-star team from top to bottom. I mean, it's almost unfair. Yeah, they're going to be lights out. They really are. And so other teams, I mean, who else is top to bottom an all-star team? Probably, I would say, just about the Yankees are. But the Yankees were already that before any trades were made uh, through the season. If that's just what the Yankees do, they stack up, they stack up, they spend money, they stack up. But what I love about the, what the Dodgers have done is the Dodgers have grown their own. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the Dodgers have that organic feel, man. That's why they're 30 games over 500. The teams that are making these wild trades at the deadline, some of them work out. I would probably say, I would venture to guess, one out of every five of those supersonic trades really work out. I would think one out of five. Right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Rock, what do you think? I think that, um, I mean, really the Yankees, they're all right. I mean, the potential loss of uh, they've all, well, their shortstop today kind of hurts, but we'll see where they go with that. Right, right. I think, but that, do, I think here's the thing, too. I think Houston – Houston just put themselves in the driver's seat fully at this point. That pitching staff is something of nightmares. You know, batters are going to go into Houston going, now, who am I going to – I'm going to have to see this entire crew. This is frightening, man, and this is, could be one of the coolest off se- postseasons in Major League Baseball in a long time. I don't know if it would be one of the coolest. I think it will be a very striking – and I mean by the point – look, we're seeing – Big names get moved around and get thrown around, right? Big names are being tossed around just as if they were, I don't know, nickels and dimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what makes um, – baseball has been looking for parity for a long time, and you're starting to see them get away from that now. Now you're starting to see the cream really rise to the top. It's going to be interesting to see how these teams – like because the Dodgers are still out there and the Dodgers are still world beaters – it's going to see, it'd be interesting to see how Houston's pitching, pitching staff gels. It's going to be interesting to see if the Yankees just keep on the torrid pace or if the Red Sox, Red Sox can nip them in the bud. It's going to be really interesting. So what about the Brewers and Pomerantz? Is that a good deal, Mr. Bruja? I mean, we need all the help. We're somewhat desperate. <laughs> but was that the deal they were looking for? Is that what Milwaukee really needed? Is that what they wanted? I mean, look, they had a starter go down. Can Pomerantz eat the innings that they're hoping? No and yes. He's got experience. I, I don't think so. I, we had so many rumors about us getting you know, top-notch cl- uh, pitchers, and you know, I'm a little bit disappointed. We didn't go out there and, and spend on the guys that I thought we were going to go get. But is it about spending or is it about growing them or making smart deals? I mean, look, this year Pomerantz – is an abysmal two and nine with a five sixty eight ERA. Yeah, it's not good. No, no, and and more importantly, he look he's hit four guys, which he hit four all of last year, but out of his seventy seven innings pitch, he's already given up eighty nine hits, fifty one runs, forty nine are earned, seventeen long ones. Mm-hmm. Now your walks to strikeouts in today's time really need to be at a three to one ratio. His are kind of close. But I think from a situational standpoint, look, this guy has won two. He's won two games out of 15 starts. He's actually pitched in 21 games. Buddy, that's 10%. Right. And we can't close games. That's our problem. I don't know how many times, you know, I'm going to be up late watching all these games going into extra innings and us blowing it, you know. Us. Well, you see, you keep saying us like you actually play for the (laughs) The Brewers. Brewers. Them. They. (laughs) Right. You are a fan or a fanatic, right? Right. <laughs> All right. So, but I guess what I'm trying to say here is, was that the right move? I really think that was just a move to appease the audience. Right. Just to have them talk about something, I guess you could say. They're playing for this year. Uh, yeah, they're playing for well, this year. Well, if they're, they're playing not... for this year, what the hell are they doing picking a Pomerantz because he doesn't bring the value? That's what I'm saying. I would saying. argue that other, de- other comp- companies, I guess they're all companies anyway, other teams – I mean, look, even the Giants 
go and pick up Scooter Gannett. Now, Scooter <laughs> is a pretty damn good player. No, now, hold is. the phone on that. Look, they got rid of Pomerantz. They said, we don't want this slug. But they got rid of Ray Black, and they pick up Scooter. And Scooter is a quality player. So I would argue the Giants actually did well, even though they didn't have to make a bunch of moves. Now, do you think that Corey Dickerson is a good acquisition from the Pittsburgh Pirates? I don't know about that. I mean, is Yorko a good pickup for the Dodgers? Do they need him? I'm going to guess no, but the Bravos actually made a really good deal. I think the Bravos picking up Shane Green was a really good deal. Yeah, that can, I mean, and he can re- be resigned, can he? He's not, his contract's not due at the end of the year. Look, at the, do you think the Braves are worried about next year? Oh, no. All of these trades, for the most part, are deals for the now. It's not for next year. Rock, would you be making a deal at the deadline for next year? It, it depends. How young is your team? You look at the Bravos, they are a pretty young team. So you could play for this year with an option for next year because you know that your young talent is still going to be there. Right, but when you're leading the way in the National League East, why are you worried about making a deal for next year? You need to hold on to your spot and bolster yourself so you can make what? The World Series. Can the Braves now, can the Braves beat the Dodgers? Because the Dodgers are the team to beat in the National League period. I think that's, they give, I think that's they give the, them a great that's series. the measuring point. Yeah, I think that's your measuring point. I think the Braves at this point give them a great series. I think it goes six or seven. And once you get to that point, you know, it's basically a coin flip, you know? It happened. Yeah, that may be the case. But when I look at what the Dodgers have done, look, they're 30 plus over 500. But more importantly, guys, the Dodgers are built for the long haul. And everyone says, well, geez, they could lose three World Series in a row. Maybe they could. Maybe they may not. But the fact is the Dodgers are the measuring stick in the National League. And now it's the Houston Astros in the American League. They are leaps and bounds ahead of everybody. Guess we're going to find out what happens as the season wears on. There's another 50 games left. Anyway, folks, we're going to be back here on the Sports Circus with our special guest. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you start up with capital, business strategy, sales, and marketing, and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet. You decide, you bring the idea. Then American Business Trust can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's abtrustco.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They'll help your business right away. That's American Business Trust Company. Online at abtrustco.com. American Business Trust Company. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Do you own a timeshare? Well, face the facts. You made a mistake. You made a bad purchase. A timeshare is not an investment. It's a money pit that continues forever. If you use your timeshare, that's great. But if you don't and you want to legally get out of your contract, call my friends right now at the Timeshare Exit Hotline. They're an experienced team of lawyers who help good people like you get out of a timeshare contract that they just don't want. 
Don't throw away your money on maintenance fees. Use it for things you really want. We can help you end your timeshare contract and stop the money drain immediately. If you are ready to move on with your timeshare, call our team right now. Cancel your timeshare now with a free call. 800-741-9557. 800-741-9557. 800-741-9557. That's 800-741-9557. Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. This segment is brought to you by the American Business Trust Company, helping your company with business strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing your company with a physical location or on the internet. You decide. You bring the idea. The American Business Trust Company can help with the rest. Visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's A-B-T-R-U-S-T-C-O.com, abtrustco.com, or call 657-600-1876. That's the American Business Trust Company. Call them right now, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They can help your business right away. And a big welcome to everybody listening in on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and our NBC, Fox, and CBS Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Folks, we have a very special guest today. We're going to let him introduce himself. Well, hi, everybody. It's Nick Bakai. Some of you may know me from my years uh, working at ESPN and NFL Network. Others may know me as the voice of Salem Saberhagen, the talking cat, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, both of which are strange because I spend most of my career writing TV shows and uh, movies. So there you have it. All right. Thanks for joining us today, Nick. <laughs> nice crowd. <laughs> yeah, you know, the crowd is great on this show. They, they're relentless, too, by the way. <laughs> so, it's never a dull moment. It's a laugh. It's a punch. You never know what's going to come out of them. All right, so I want to know a little bit more about the sports casting side because a lot of people obviously know you for your work with uh, the show Mom as the executive mm-hmm. producer, right? And yeah. your work with Two and a Half Men, Until Death, and so forth, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But tell me more about the sports casting side. Well, it really goes back a long way. Um, at the dawn of what is now Comedy Central, I worked at when it was called Comedy Channel. I worked there in New York. And in the early going, um, I did two shows primarily there. One was Night After Night. I was sort of the sidekick to Alan Havey. That was the original late night show. And at the same time, um, we cooked up a show that was sort of a parody of Sports Center called Sports Monster um, that I did with uh, Joe Bolster, John Heyman, and Scott Carter producing. And, um, you know, it was back when the Comedy Channel was struggling just to get into homes. Um, but during that time, we kind of caught the attention of some people over at ESPN. So a few years later, when they were launching ESPN2, or as it was referred to back then, the Deuce, um, they were just looking for alternative voices. And they reached out to me, and I had some meetings, and I went to Bristol, and uh, it turned into a long relationship where I contributed columns and also a lot of on-camera segments over the years for pretty much all their platforms. Um, the most notorious probably was a segment I used to do with my wife about bad football bets. Um, that we used to do on Sports Center every uh, Monday after the uh, NFL weekend. Um, so, and you know, I did that for ages. Um, and then this sort of time and children and other career stuff kind of made it harder and harder to do. But I had a blast while it lasted. It's funny you mention that because somebody mentioned that to me literally 45 minutes ago, right before we came on, and they said, "Hey, I wonder if Nick's going to talk about the ESPN work and oh, just about the bad betting and so forth." So yeah, was, yeah, no, that was you, great. Steve, we did right. it for about, I guess, three or four years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was really the one time, I don't know what they're up to these days, because now that betting is legal in so many places, it's just the tide has turned so much. But back in that era, um, we were really the only 
you know, we always had Berman doing the Swami picks and all that stuff, but right. we would actually be there after a weekend of NFL football with jokes and just doing all these different scenarios, but I was there showing the footage of the game where the kicker screwed you out of money or whatever the bad <laughs> beat of it all was. And, you know, it was a blast, and people loved it. Um, it was hilarious when we would go to Vegas, Robin and I, because people come up to you, we were sort of the patron saints of bad bets and bad bets gone wrong. And guys would come up to us like we were fluent in every bad bet that had ever happened on an NFL outcome forever. And they would be talking to us about, you know, 1972 and the Buccaneers were laying three. And, you know, it, it was just hilarious. Because everybody had to come and tell us their stories. Um, but it was great. And But it was funny. Ironically, ultimately, the NFL kind of shut it down. There was... Uh, the same year that they did a show called Playmakers, which I think is long forgotten as well, but it was kind of a, you know, an NFL, it was a drama set in a mythical pro football league, but all the stories were sort of taken from the headlines of that era of football. And um, the NFL did not like that show, and they really didn't like our segment. And when the, when the deals were up to re-up NFL football at ESPN, we all got crushed. Right. And folks, we're here with Nick, Bata- Nick Bakai. Hey, Nick, let me ask you this. Uh, was your training for sports casting, does that take you all the way back to the purple, white, and black of Kenyan? <laughs> wow. Good research. Um, no, you know, it's funny. I never trained to do sports. I was a trained actor, believe it or not. And that's what I did in my early days and when I was living in New York. And, you know, it, my career just led me down such a different road ultimately and it started with writing comedy bits for the old national lampoon magazine which is what led me to the comedy channel but no i i had no you know i loved sports um i had a point of view about sports but i never imagined that i would ever do anything for mainstream sports but it's that weird side door that gets you in the building you know by doing this show that was just goofing on sports center I ended up being on Sports Center. You can never predict these things. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, by the yeah. way, in, ca- in case you didn't know, and I don't know how active you were when you were a student back in the day, but the men's swim team is yeah. notable in Division Dynastic. Three. Yes, yeah. for having won from 1980 through 2010 a record 31 consecutive NCAA national championships as well as consecutive titles between 2000 and 12 and 2013 the swim team is remarkable yeah that was the <laughs> it was you know it's a tiny liberal arts school in rural ohio about 1400 total student body and you know that was the sport they said we're gonna we're gonna be all about swimming and they were and the dominance was kind of crazy um it's really not a big sports school but the swimming was a big deal and there was always that day when the swim team I was there in the you know the late seventies, and everyone had long hair, and the pool would just ruin guys' hair. So there was that day when they'd all show up in the dining hall with their heads shaved, looking like cyborgs, which <laughs> was not hip in nineteen seventy eight. You know, this is way right. pre Jordan. This was like God. You guys are really paying the price because you're never getting laid with a bald head. You know, so it was just <laughs> a, a stripe of honor. <laughs> right, right. Well, with that long hair, kind of looking like. An old rock star from, I don't know, from back in the days of Queen. Oh, yeah. No, definitely parked on the middle Led Zeppelin all the way back then. Oh, parted with an axe, right? Oh, nice yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So, look, you're, so you're, you've got the Buffalo roots. And, look, we have a really nice audience over in the greater Buffalo area. We do cover mm-hmm. quite a bit of bills. In fact, just a couple of days ago, we had on Jim Jeffcoat. You know, Jim spent the last few years of sure. his career in Buffalo as well. Yep. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Um, which is always interesting when a cowboy ends up in Buffalo, especially in that era. But, yeah, I, I, uh, I remember Jim Jeffcoat finishing up as a bill. And, um, well, look, I, I loved growing up in that city. You know, it's the butt of jokes. It's not so much as it used to be, but um, it's just one of those things Buffalonians know. If you grew up there, you get it. It's just a little a gem of a place to grow up and raise a family and live, and um, and you know we take a lot of pride. And uh, I, I just uh, any chance I get, it's hard now. 
Um, I don't have that sort of built-in family reason to go home anymore, but any chance I get to go home, I do because I love that city. You know, the people are really genuine there, and that's to me yeah. that's probably the biggest draw out of out of a lot of the cities that I've been to in this country. I've been to most of them. That is one place I know I can count on to get a real opinion on something that's not full of hype and all this other crap. I mean, look, yeah. man, I've I've had the right people on from there, from Jim McNally to Don Beebe, right, and, and a whole bunch of others sure. that are tied back to Buffalo. And I just don't understand why. I mean, even the Clippers, go back to the birth of the Clippers, right? The yeah, Clippers, right. as they Bridge, migrate. Baby. Hey, let me ask yeah. you a question. i, I got to ask you here in the last two minutes of the segment. What do you think about Steve Ballmer possibly changing the name of the Clippers? Um, i I got to be honest with you. Um, I think it's fine. I mean, I live in L.A. Really? now. I've lived here a long oh. time. Yeah, I mean, look, the Clippers, but what are you associating with Clippers? You know, I am not against it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm like, you know, burn that down and start something new because they've been terrible. <laughs> they were terrible ever, all those Donald Sterling years, and they used to play at that terrible place downtown. Well, the yeah, so there's nothing oh, remarkable yeah. about it. They should change. There's, there, you know, what are you holding on to there except a legacy of cheapness and mediocrity? And he's, He's a passionate owner. I say change it up, but, you know, I'm sure there are Clipper people who are offended, but the Clippers are the Braves, and deal with it. You know, the Braves are gone. Why would I be Clipper loyal? Okay. All right. So here in the last minute, I have to tell you, I do have one quick Clippers story, and it was after the Clippers and the Rockets in a playoff game probably about 25 years ago at the sports arena. My brother and I were walking out of the sports arena. And like, hey, look, here, there's one of the buses where the players go to, and it was for the Rockets. And standing out there all by himself, there was nobody around, was Rudy T. Rudy Tomjanovich. Yeah. We walked up, started talking to Rudy. Well, maybe 15, 20 minutes, he goes, hey, man, you want to have a beer? So Rudy had the beers <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> so that's we were having great. beers with Rudy T. Oh, that's after great. the game. That, just, uh, that is so wonderful and old school. <laughs> I love that it. That was incredible. All right, folks, we're going to be that's back here great. with Nick McKay. In just a few minutes on the Sports Circus, don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. It's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Don't wait. Call right now. 888-794-1630. 888-794-1630. Write it down. 888-794-1630. Again, for the last time, 888-794-1630.
That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935, or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Hey there, it's Nick McKay. You may know me as the voice of Salem Saberhagen, the talking cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You're listening to the Sports Circus. It's, uh, I'm on a calliope. Get me out of here. I'm scared. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for all of our future guests, our prior guests, our podcast. Go to the store, pick up some swag, great T-shirts, all American-made products, and also check out our partners. We do work with some great charities and great organizations. Also, be sure to follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram, we are TSC Show. On Twitter, we are at the Sports Circus, and on Facebook, you can find us under the Sports Circus. It's really me, Sal Circus. So just go ahead and search for that. And also, thanks for following us, everybody else that's following us on social media and uh, those tuning in and streaming the show live at thesportscircus.com and everybody else that's listening on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and Spotify and iHeart from coast to coast. Of course, a big hello to our friends up in western New York listening to one of your own on WLVL, the New York Yankees radio network. Our Fox Sports affiliate, 1340 and 105.3 FM. Folks, we're here with Nick Bakai. And Nick, you have such a diversified background. How did you end up going from sports to the voice of my favorite character in the world, which is Salem Saberhagen? Ironically, I know the wife of Brett Saberhagen. How do you like that? No <laughs> kidding. Right. There's a little a strange twist. A, a big hello to Candace. All right, but anyway, Ken is a friend of the circus. But anyway, how did you get from there to there, and now what executive producer for a really funny show? I've seen most of the episodes of Mom. It's really funny. That's great to hear. Thank you. And you know, we um, I'm really proud of the show, and we're actually we, we're going to shoot our first episode of season seven next week. So we, the writers, have been back at it for a while now, but. It's been just a wonderful experience. I appreciate the kind words. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a really strong show. And I've worked on some that aren't, so I'll be honest, you know, but this one's worth your while. You know, the sports thing, I always did concurrent with writing. Um, writing was always how I made my living. Um, you know, the sports came uh, at an interesting time and was the kind of thing that, you know, I was never – it was never a situation where I had to move to Bristol and be full-time with that. I was always sort of contributing in a way that it was the stuff I ended up doing mornings, nights, and weekends. But my bread and butter was always writing, sometimes writing and performing, but always writing on TV shows. Um, so it was always simultaneous. You know, whatever I was doing ESPN, I was doing, you know, I did In Living Color, I was doing... King of Queens, Sabrina, everything I've always done, I was doing. When we would do that gambling segment, you know, Monday mornings, we would have the script written and sent to Bristol on Sundays. There was a crew in my living room on Monday morning. We'd shoot the segment. It would get, you know, microwaved to Bristol. And then I would be over at uh, Sony Studios in Culver City at 10 a.m. for a King of Queens table read. So I was always wow. doing this in the nooks and crannies because, 
um, writing's always been my living. So another project, you know, if you ever want to do a segment for the sports circus, something crazy, weird, whatever, unusual, you're always welcome to do it as well. <laughs> well, I'll, think, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, hey, you never know. Who, hey, if you have a project to promote, maybe just come right back on. You're on. You're welcome anytime. It doesn't really matter to us. I would love that. We control the content, and nobody really tells us. Of course, we can't say the bad words, but nobody tells us right. what to cover and what not to cover. That's the best part about this. Oh, that's the best. You know, any situation I've ever had where there's the less interference, your content's always better. More power to you. You're in a good spot then. Well, and this is something we've been on air for, well, we're, we're finishing up our third year. And we started off at 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning at a local Fox affiliate here in Las Vegas where nobody mm -hmm. was awake. Who the hell's yeah. awake at 6 a.m.? Saturday morning in Vegas, that's great. Well, some people haven't gone to bed. You're praying for them, right? <laughs> I'll tell you what. It was the board operator, myself, and the intern. That's it. <laughs> Seriously, it was awful. But then we moved to 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings, and then after a few months, boom, uh, we, we were picked up on a Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. When those guys over at the other organization said we couldn't do it, well, the laugh's on them because that's exactly what we did. We started competing with those guys head-to-head. -head. It was a right. great thing. But, yeah, we've grown. Good we've, for you, man. Yeah, we've we've done thousands of hours of broadcasting, and it's been a riot so far. And and the guest list, you're only enhancing the guest list, the guest list that we already have. Oh, well, that's beautiful. You know, and you know, maybe it was good you had that time where nobody was listening. You got your chop. Yeah, I really believe that probably was serving because you know they say well you got to find your radio voice or find your stage voice, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that probably happened, I'm going to say probably a good six or seven months into it, because it doesn't just happen. Yeah. It's kind of like no. when you realize you're in the zone, you're out of the zone. You know what I mean? No, I do. And, you know, a lot of shows I've worked on, I was there from the pilot into the run. Mm -hmm. If you look at the pilot episode of most shows that have a nice lifespan, it's fascinating because the show has to reveal itself to you, and you have to be smart enough to listen to it. Pilot. Yes. Some of them are just remarkable because they define the whole thing, and the blueprint was just brilliant right out of the gate. But more of them um, are sort of like watching a show, a version of the show you know that's from a parallel universe, and it's just a little weird, a little off, and they haven't quite found it yet, so that's very real. Right. So listen, we've got just a few minutes left in the show. What are you doing in your spare time besides writing? How do you and your significant other, how does everybody spend some spare time, some fun time? What do you do to just chill and get away from all this? That's really interesting. This is it's tough right now. I have, for good reasons, I, I'm working on Mom. I'm also, uh, I work on another Netflix show called The Kaminsky Method. Um, and I've been helping out with a new CBS show that's premiering soon, uh, Bob Hart's Abishola. So I'm really really happy and busy but you know i've got young kids i got a seven-year-old and an 11 year old and the, the real downtime at this point in my life and it's one of the reasons i'm not doing much with sports anymore sal is because i've got these kids and you know i've spent so much of my time working on shows where the hours were pretty brutal and i wasn't home um i'm in a situation where i can actually control that part of it for the first time ever and my downtime is really about being with my family and you know i'm old enough that i've sowed all those oats and i've done all the wild and fun stuff and i'm just happy being with my gang now so i've got some peace of mind it's it's nothing exotic but it's working <laughs> hey, it doesn't have to be exotic as long as you're doing no. something that you just get to unwind your brain or recharge the batteries that's half the battle yeah right absolutely there. absolutely a lot of people are just working to try to get past the next plateau. It's like, well, where does it end? Do you have know, an end game with all And audience? there's a time for that. There's a time where you have to make those sacrifices. Um, you know, and then hopefully you get to the point where you can actually trust the machine a little bit. It takes a while, though. It really does. You know, you've got to earn those stripes. But, um, man, it's nice when you get there. Right. Well, you know, maybe take the kids to the beach or up to the mountains, whatever, whatever. Maybe have a picnic in the park. Take the kids there flying a kite. When's the last time you flew a kite? Oh, my goodness. Well, I think it got to been years. You know, I know I had my littlest guy 
on the beach at some point, but it's been a while. I think I know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, the last time I went flying a kite, I, I actually flew it down in Playa del Rey, and I had a big uh, 10-foot-long black shark, and I had it up so Ooh. high it was in the flight pattern for the one ray <laughs> for the for the south runaway at LAX and they had to wow. the, yeah the air traffic control called down to the beach to have me take the kite down that's insane <laughs> yeah, wow. but that's a real story though that's no i believe you <laughs> all right hey nick listen we got about a minute left in the segment tell everybody how they could follow you and your programs your social media and everything and so sure. forth okay well you can watch the kaminsky method any old time you want cuz it's on netflix um, it won a Golden Globe for Michael Douglas, and uh, he got an Emmy nomination for it. I recommend it highly. Mom, you can watch on CBS Thursday nights at 9. It's also syndicated all over the place, and I think we're on TV land. Um, so, you know, that's the easy way to do it. And you can track me down at Nick Bakai for Real. That's my Twitter, and I'm on Facebook, too, but... I'll be honest with you, I don't do much with it because I'm busy writing these damn things. But there you have it. Constantly busy. Well, Nick, thanks for joining us, folks. <laughs> Nick Bakai, a very busy guy and a very talented guy. Make sure you follow him on all those mediums and make sure you tune in to Mom. That is a funny show. Folks, we're going to be back thanks. tomorrow right here on the Sports Circus on your favorite station. So until then, thanks for Nick Bakai joining us today and our producer, Mike, getting it done over there in Chicago. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here in Vegas. We'll see you next time on your favorite channel. Until then, so long, everyone. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Louis Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing, and that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have him on Sunday he night. He should have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. He, you're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from The Miracles. 
So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You, didn't you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? Is that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? 